to take a look at. We just have two kind of smaller properties left. What happens if we end up multiplying or if we end up adding or we end up subtracting? And what's going to happen if we end up with maybe a negative exponent or maybe a zero exponent? Those do happen. So let's see how we're going to handle those. So similar to what we did with our first exponent properties, I want us to discover what these are. Not just, here you go, here's what zero exponent means. I want you guys to see for yourselves why something to the zero power is what we're going to find out it is. All right, so just like our last investigation, we're going to go ahead and expand out. So let's expand out our top. So we're going to have a 5 times a 5 times a 5. And then on the bottom, we're going to have a 5 times a 5 times a 5. I might be thinking, Miss Gallagher, but that's just the same thing top, same thing bottom. You're right, it is the same thing. So when it says to simplify, 5 times 5, we're going to get, or excuse me, 5 divided by 5, we're going to get a 1. We're going to get a 1. 5 divided by 5, we're going to get a 1. Now I've been very careful when we've done that crossing out to call it simplifying. It's not canceling. Canceling means that there's nothing left. 5 divided by 5, though, guys, that's 1. Not zero, five divided by five is one. So if I just have a bunch of ones left, that's my simplified form. Five to the third divided by five to the third, it's gonna get us a one. Five divided by five is one. It's gonna get us a one. I know things are, it looks like they're canceling out, but they're just simplifying. Now that last box says simplify using our exponent property. Well, if we're dividing, if we're dividing, what do we do with those exponents? If we're dividing, what do we do with the exponents? A lot of you just finished up practicing that property. It was the last property we learned. Subtract. You subtract them, yeah. So what's 3 minus 3 going to get us? Zero. Zero. So 3 minus 3 is going to get us a 0. Now you might be thinking, oh, Miss Guy, okay, cool. So 5 to the 0 is just going to get me a 0. Mm, nope. What did we just simplify it to? It's going to give us a 1. It's going to give us a 1. I wanted you guys to see that, not just, not just, hey, guys, here's what it equals. So do me a favor, expand out those next couple. We're just going to spend a couple minutes on it. Expand out those next couple. Show yourself the simplifying. And then that last column, do our exponent property. Subtract those exponents. As you guys are doing the expanding on your paper, I'm going to go ahead and expand out up here. If something isn't matching what you have, let me know. Or if you're like, Miss Gala, the expanding out thing, I'm not quite sure on that. Let me know. I'll come help you out. Remember, when you're doing that simplifying, I know it looks like they're crossing out and going away, but really, 5 divided by 5 was 1. X divided by X is also 1. So we just have a bunch of ones we end up multiplying together. So we just get one. Subtract your exponents. X divided by X is going to give me a one. Same way as five divided by five gives me a one. Same thing divided by itself just gives us one yeah whether it's x's whether it's fives whether it's something with an exponent same thing divided by itself just gives me one i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna get that last one up there Be careful on the last one. Not everything is going to simplify. So 
So we're also getting a nice refresher on, we're also getting a nice refresher on that last rule of exponents too. So the big idea with this first one, for any non-zero number, we just have a generic x there, anything to the power of zero equals what? One. Equals one. Now I can't, I can't in my calculator put x to the zero. I'm gonna get an error on that. But if I ever forget, if I'm like, oh shoot, I have something to the zero. I know we did that, uh, I'm on a quiz and I blanked out. Put something like five to the zero in your calculator and it's gonna spit back out a one at you. So you might have something like an x to the zero and I can't put that in my calculator, but I could put a number in for that variable and see what it should be. So if you needed to double check, you could put something like our first one, you could put five to the zero in your calculator and remind yourself that it's one, no big deal. All right, so if we come across a zero exponent, we know how to handle that now. It's just gonna be a one. Let's talk negatives. What happens if I do, maybe I do some subtracting, adding, multiplying, whatever it is. What if I end up with some negatives? So let's try expanding out so we can see what happens. And as always, that expanding out piece, guys, it's a nice fallback method for us too. So in that very first row, five squared, we're gonna have a five times a five. And then go ahead and put your five fives in the denominator. Now this is new for us. Usually when we've simplified, we've had more fives in the top than we have in the bottom, or x's or y's, whatever we've had. We've always had more in the top. So let's go ahead and simplify. Simplify, simplify. What's left in the numerator, that top piece? What's really up there? Zero. Not a zero, be careful. There's really a one left. Remember, five divided by five is one. We're not canceling things, we're simplifying things. So we've got a one in the top. And then what about the denominator? What's going on down there? Five to the third, yeah. There's three fives left, so five to the third. Now that last column says simplify using our exponent property, our quotient of powers. So again, we're dividing. So if I subtract my exponents, it's always top minus bottom. We get five to the what? Negative three, yeah, it's always top minus bottom. If you need to write yourself a two minus five there, you can. We get five to the negative third. When you're working with exponents, you're always going to be asked to simplify so you have all positive exponents. Well, we just simplified this two different ways. We actually expanded out and simplified, and then we did our subtracting, we did our exponent property. We should get the same thing. So five to the negative third, that's the same thing, guys, as our one over five to the third that we just saw. So if you have that negative exponent, take a look at where it becomes positive. Take a look at where it becomes positive. Just have to bump it down. We're good. Go ahead and expand out those next two rows. And let's make sure we kind of see where, what's going on with our negative exponents. What happens when I have more fives in the bottom than I do the top, or x's or whatever it is. Expand them out. If you're stuck on the expanding, guys, let me know. I know a few of us in our last investigation, it was a little tough. I'm gonna go ahead and expand out up here.
Second row is looking good as I walked around. Try the last one. Remember, guys, just to expand it out. Simplify like we know how. And then write what you have left. Remember, it's always top exponent minus bottom. And it's okay if we get a negative. That's what we're learning how to deal with through just our little investigation here. That's what we're learning how to deal with. Okay, so based on our results, if we have a base with a negative exponent, and right now it's in the numerator, where do we need to move it to so it becomes a positive exponent? Where do we move it to? Looking at our table, we move it from the top down to the, to the bottom, down to the denominator. So this would become 1 over x to the, and now the n is positive. Now the one piece that wasn't in our table, and I find it hard to, to show expanding out in things, is when we have the negative exponent in the denominator. So let's use our reasoning skills here. If we have a negative exponent in the numerator, to make it positive, I move it to the denominator. If I have a negative in the denominator, where is it going to go to become positive? Up to the numerator. Yeah, you're just going to switch it. So again, we're not, we're not looking at another major exponent property. This is just when we use our three big properties we've learned, what happens if I add two numbers together and I get an exponent of zero? What do I do with that? What happens if I subtract two numbers and I get a negative exponent? What happens? So this is, we're going to keep using our same big three properties we learned a couple classes ago. And now we just know how to handle it if we get a zero exponent or a negative exponent. Okay, so we're just uh, accounting for those types of situations. The thing I want to stress this is a negative exponent. If I have, let's say I have negative 4y squared. If my coefficient is negative, totally fine, let it be. I don't move coefficients. I move exponents. So just be careful with that piece. And I also want to highlight, too, in that very last row, notice just the y had the negative exponent. So just the y went to the denominator. The x stayed put because the x has a positive exponent. So only moving negative exponents.